Hi, this is Bill Papoon, Managing Consultant at Construction Science. I'm going to talk a little bit about baselines today. There's quite a bit of misunderstanding when it comes to baselines in Primavera P6. So I'm going to show you something that I'm hoping is fairly obvious as far as one of the potential problems you can have when setting up a baseline. Currently, I have a schedule open that's in progress. And this is where the problem will really jump out at you. So we're showing some activities on the screen. You can see the blue represents work in progress, whereas other activities have not started yet. Essentially, this is the fifth update on a project that we're working on right now. So let's set up a baseline. To do that, we go up to Project, Maintain Baseline, and then you click on Add. Now what we're going to look at right now is making a copy of the current schedule and making it a baseline. A perfect copy of the current schedule. Well, why would you do that? Let's say you're getting ready to make some changes, but you're not sure if they'll really work out. We can make a complete copy of the schedule, and then as we're modifying it from this point forward, we can compare our changes to the baseline. Or if you think about it, if this was the baseline schedule, the original schedule on the project, we can make a baseline of the baseline. And then as we start modifying the current schedule to become the first update, then we're referring back to these target bars, which are the baseline schedule. So that's another good reason for doing this. Now the conversion, the second option, is when you want to go much further back. Let's say we're working on the 15th update, and we'd like to compare how this schedule looks with the 12th update, or maybe go all the way back to day one with the original baseline schedule. Because we're not trying to make a copy of the current schedule, we're essentially copying and attaching another schedule as our baseline. That's a much different procedure. I want to focus, though, on the first option today. We're going to make a complete copy of the, of the current schedule, the fifth update. So I'll click OK. And we'll wait a moment, and we'll see confirmation that the baseline has been created. I'm not a big fan of the word baseline as it's used in Primavera P6, because I run into a constant problem communicating with people. Someone says to me, Bill, I'm comparing the current schedule to the baseline. Well, what baseline is that? It could be last month's schedule, two months ago. It could be the original schedule on the project. The word baseline has become a generic term in P6. And as a result, I need people to give me more information about what schedule in particular they're referring to as the baseline. All right, after a brief delay, you can now see that the fifth update with the extension B1 is our baseline. So let's go ahead and close this out. The next step is we need to tell Primavera how to find this baseline. We can have more than one, so we're going to label this baseline so that Primavera can identify it for us. We go back to Project. Now we go down to Assign Baselines. And you'll see up here we have a Project Baseline and we have User Baselines. Right now, neither one of them is using a baseline, so we're going to switch this and pick the schedule that I just created, that copy. But I'm also going to do it down here. Now this might seem weird. Why do I have to make the project baseline and the primary baseline the same? It helps to avoid confusion. There are certain settings in P6 where you can tell it to calculate off the primary baseline or to calculate off the project baseline. So if you tend to flip back and forth with these settings, you're not looking at the right data. Also, no one but you will see the user baselines. So I like to have my primary baseline also be the project baseline so that when I'm displaying my baseline on a Gantt chart, other users are seeing the same baseline that I'm seeing on my screen, because otherwise these three are exclusive to the user. All right, so we've set this up. Now Primavera knows how to identify them, so let's display it. Let's right-click inside the Gantt chart. Let's go to Bars. 
and you'll see that we've got primary baseline. So I could use that one or the one that's for project baseline, but I'll just pick primary. So now it's going to be displayed. It's going to be a yellow bar, certainly lots of options, but I like to have it a highly contrasting color. And you'll also see that I typically make it a skinny bar. I don't want it to take up too much space vertically. And having a different shape than some of these other bars, such as the work completed, which is a much fatter bar, I think makes it look more distinct on the screen. One last thing is I usually display the baseline on row two. The primary bars will be on row one. So in some instances, the dates will overlap. So it's nice to have the baseline bar below the current bar. All right, so we're ready to see it on the screen. And keep in mind, this is a perfect copy of my fifth update. That's all I did. I said, Primavera, copy my schedule. So we should see no difference between the baseline bars and the current bars. Unless, of course, we start modifying the current bars, but we haven't touched them yet. So let's go ahead and click OK. And you might notice we're starting to have some problems. Notice, especially for these activities that are in progress, the target bar is not matching up. Let's see if we have a few more of these. Yes, here's another one and another one. Typically, I find that they're fine. The target bar or baseline will match up for a current bar that's not in progress. But you'll see these other ones don't look right at all. So the question is, why not? I mean, after all, this is supposed to be nothing more than a copy of my current schedule. Believe it or not, it's because of earned value. Most of us don't think of earned value as having anything to do with displaying a target bar on my screen. But in fact, it does change how Primavera identifies the dates for those bars. So let me show you how we change this. We're going to go up to Admin, go down to Admin Preferences, and you'll see Earn Value. Again, Earn Value is something that most of us would think about for a cost-loaded schedule but it does affect the baselines. And it's this option right down here that we need to watch. There's three settings. The first two, using at completion values or budgeted values, it's hard to say that one is right versus the other. If you have a project where the budgets never change, then the second option here would be fine. But in some instances, you might want this one because you've changed budgets over the course of the project. But where it was sitting initially, and I did this intentionally, was this one right here. In another lesson, we'll explain to you why plan dates don't mean anything in P6. Once a schedule has progress, plan dates are truly meaningless. So if you're going to calculate baseline bars off of these fictitious plan dates, you're not going to get the right information. Let's try this one right here, budgeted values with current dates. If your schedule isn't cost-loaded, these two settings are essentially the same. Let's go ahead and close this out. And then let's go back in here. And we're probably going to need to clear out the memory. So we're going to come back in here. And I'm going to reverse the process. Sometimes I might have to actually delete the baseline, but we're going to try it this way just by going back in a moment and seeing if we can convince Primavera to find the correct settings now. So I'll go back into Assign Baseline and pick the current project. All right, doesn't look like that's going to work for us, so let's go ahead and delete this baseline because the bars are clearly not correct. So I'm going to back out all the way. First, I need to take out all references to the baseline because trying to delete a baseline while Primavera is still trying to read it is sort of like a thumb drive. If you're trying to read information off a thumb drive when you pull it out of your laptop, you're going to get an error message. And it's the same thing here. We need to take out this information so Primavera does not try to access it. So now I've taken out the reference to the baseline. The second step here, delete the baseline altogether. Let's put this back in there the correct way. If I had copied another project using the second option of convert, 
deleting a baseline would not be a very smart option. I would actually be deleting that particular schedule out of my database. But because all I was doing was making a copy of a schedule, deleting that copy is not a problem. So this time we'll come in, we'll make another copy, and this should take just a moment. Now you'll notice there's still yellow bars on my screen. Why are there yellow, bar yellow bars? Because Primavera still is trying to display some sort of baseline because that option has been selected. But when we come in this time and we reestablish the baseline using the correct earn value settings, then the bars will make sense. All right, we've got that part taken care of. Let's go back to Project Assign Baselines. And once again, the primary and the project baseline will be the same schedule. Problem solved. You can see that the yellow bars for these activities in progress match up exactly with the current bars above them. These gaps right here, you probably know, are indicative of out-of-sequence work, meaning that there's a predecessor to this activity, as well as to the one above it that's not complete yet and that remaining duration is carrying through. But the length of the target bar, or baseline as we now have to call it, is exactly correct. So keep in mind, if you don't check your earned value settings, these baseline bars could be completely meaningless. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you'd like to know more about Primavera P6 and some of the training options that we have, feel free to give me a call or visit us at primaveraschedulingcom and you can find about some of our other services at constructionscience.com. I hope to hear from you. Thank you.